going to read some pieces that are in my forthcoming pamphlet, Cash Cash, which should be out shortly. Um, it's been held up, but um, there are some cards. Um, and I'll read some pieces that are in another pamphlet coming out later in the year. Um, and I'll read some stuff that isn't in anything, might be one day. Um, since we're in an art gallery, I thought I'd give you some art things. Um, so the first one is, um, it was a commission for uh, an anthology um, celebrating the centenary of Joan Eardley's birth. Uh, if you don't know, she's a, an artist who was English, but she was kind of adopted by the Scots, um, and she's considered to be a Scottish visual artist. She did kind of two sorts of things. One was um, she painted street children in Glasgow at the turn of the like, 20th century. And then she moved later to the coast, the east coast of Scotland, to a place called Catiline. And she was obsessed with painting the sea. And I'm really obsessed with the sea. So. This is place setting, Joan Eardley's Catiline. One. Audrey's photographs record your life in black and white, not the confident colours of thick oil, slick domestic gloss or boat lacquer. Top sides are antifile, not sure. Blues in nature are mere reflections of light, the impression of blue. Those strong blues, turquoise underlay, says Sue's blog, are well loved, jewel-like. And after all, gemstone, lapis lazuli is the basis for ultramarine, and you're nothing if not an ultramariner. Squinting into the salty spray like your fishermen neighbours, the customs and coast guards ghosts in your watch house watchy, crafty cross studio stuck out on a limb from the other cottages, strung along the cliff top. Perched on the edge, single story, squat, hunkering down against the sea frets, stripping wings, tugging studies from the stand in front of your eyes. No place for delicate folk, but you wouldn't have it any other way. You, with your scooter and greasy cloths, your mother tutting men's trousers. Two. Cordelia called it a record of your life, this heartboard or canvas or paper, a layered record rich with seeded grasses and pigment trapped daisies, the summer meadows, the haystacks, the beehives, the chalky chimneys, the 17 foot larch poles driven into the drying green, green patch, patched up bag nets for salmon, pulleyed high and stretched out to dry. Creels for crabs and lobster in tears on the pier, paint pots left overnight. Then turn your back on landscapes and run to face the storm sweeping across the crescent curved bay, crashing waves onto the scraggy strand. That sea is wild, white mares foaming, frothing, sky close and heavy as wet wool. Keep running, past boats pulled up the pebble beach, clink of cobbles, lash down your easel, strap it to a rock, anchor it to the Scottish shoreline. Use stones as weights, clamps to claim a firm hold on those paintings while you mix your palette and apply. Expressive, vibrant, frenzied. There is a new blue now, Joan, and every time a storm hits, it is given a name. So, we're going to go from Scotland to Lancashire. Um, and this is um, based upon the West Penn Wars in a little village called, well, not even a village, a hamlet called White Coppice. And it's got a bit of fan text in it. Um, all the pub names in Lancashire that have the word white in are in here. This is Moorland Fog. It's a favourable dream omen, white. White cube, a blank canvas. White space, a breather. White noise, an escape. White bear, white wall, white bull. White crow, white duck, white heart, white horse, white lion, white swan. White coppice, white cottages. White wedding cake, top of picket fence. Chocolate box hamlet, white chalet pavilion. Cricket pitch, rolled flat to the eye, not 
to the ball. Corners tucked crisp as a white hotel milled linen, cotton mill, mill lodge, mill pond, mill race, water wheel, waterfalls, white water, black brook dark with great hill peat, tumbling through burnt black bracken, blackberries, bilberries, crowberries, red grouse, golden plover, upland, heathland, and blanket bog. Little clouds of cotton grasses, fluffy. Heather misted mauve hillsides, spritzes of silver birch. Moorland fog is a made up name, a white clean kitchen surface, a quartz bright, durable, non marble marble, all the same, white. Um, so I've been commissioned as part of um, a project called Lancashire Stories. Um, to write a short story um, based in Lancashire. Clues in the name, really. <laughs> um, and so I'm basing it around a lighthouse at the entrance to the River Loon estuary. Um, the lighthouse is called Plumber Scar. And I've got a deadline on this story, which is looming. And I just keep writing poetry about Plumber Scar instead. So this is called Housekeeping. Up top, a picture window, one watchful eye on the sea, the sky, a mirror too, reflecting both blues. Below, a porthole peeps over the wall, white daubed, easy to spy, come dark. An extra curve hooked the highlight, red painted once. The stone cottage has its own kink for bracing, severe gale force nine, storm force ten. Violent Storm 11. Barrowed inland to the shape of an anvil cloud, that slack lane hawthorn has known a few thrashings. Heard waves crashing the beach, water rushing shingle, howling winds blowing the dull, roaring sound of fear. Later, we clock the curlews, notice the mass movement, shoreline writhing. Even the oyster catcher's orange bill is outglared by the sun, catching on glassy spider threads strung between grazing blades, pee whip plucked. A nautical mile, minute of latitude, plumber scar solid on its slippery, slippery ledge, all seaweed and sucking sand slicing shells. Mrs. Parkinson polished silver, lit lamps, went out all weathers in Wellingtons and tweed. Twice a day, shinning steel stairs, smiling. Here's Beatrice, with her best heels and beads, summer dress and hat, our only woman keeper of lighthouses, herself a beacon, smiling. Okay, so this from the Irish Sea, uh, we're going up the River Mersey and the River Mersey all the way to Didsbury. Will finches inhabit me? If I st sit still long enough, will finches inhabit me? Will wrens take me for a willow as weeds take back town? The wheezing tractor raises the river verge, releases a stash of small mammals to those corvidae crowds. This trampled clover bed smell like lifted ground sheet. No passing trade now, grass reclaims the streets. Green table runner the length of my road recalls wild Welsh lanes I, young road horseback. Ferns creep from cracks. Crash paving stone parties, periwinkle spring, string ups fairy lights, sprinkle their starshine in the gutter where I spy with my bird like eye Oxalis, exotic afraid, her bruised heart all splayed. What has never left cannot resurge, they said. At the bench of the two Susans, hovering water's edge, silver plaque gone, not forgot, I hear things different. See the burgeoning bladder, the motorway a blanket, baffling. I'm sorry, can you, can you repeat the question? Okay, so, well, Finches Inhabit Me is like a kind of shape poem, 
it's, I'm not very good at typesetting, but the idea is that that's the, mid, the grass in the middle of the lane. Um, typesetter did it nicely for me, but I didn't print that one out. <laughs> um, and that's from Cash Cash, my fourth room pamphlet. Um, so, as mentioned, that's not available, but we've got another shape home that you can buy, but I'm not going to read that. You need to buy it. And also, that's one poem, but you get three poems in one, you'll find out. Anyway, this is my last piece. Um, I'm going back to art. Um, in my second pamphlet, which is out in the autumn, I've done lots of um, messing around. I like constraints. I used to write flash fiction, and I still do with it, because of the constraint of the word limit. Um, I like constraints like Ula post stuff where you take out letters or things like that. Um, so this is an anagram of the title. Move for open brackets, Barbara Hepworth, close brackets. Raw, mob, peb, hewn to moon, not thrown the norm, no. Bone worn, worn bone, one, mono. Moon born forth from earth, map the fate of woman, her own now here. There, the prow of the boat, the boom, the rope to the berth at the port, the port, the town. Ebb, flow, walk, 